Welcome to the Vikings Now. I'm your host, Patrick Seatman. We've got a fun show for you guys today. We're going to be going over the meetings the Minnesota Vikings have set up with the uh, 2023 NFL Draft class. they got a ton of big names. they actually got three quarterbacks that we're going to be diving into, which I was shocked to hear that the Vikings decided to you know, take time out of their draft combine process and go meet with three quarterbacks and two quarterbacks that are probably going to go in the first round. But before we dive into the five interviews the Vikings have set up, get down to the comments for me and answer this question. What position do you want the Vikings to draft? If you're sitting there at 23, and let's just say you have all your best player available type of guys there, what position are you leaning towards? I'm leaning corner. I've been on corner this whole offseason. I'm going to be typing corner in the comments, but let me know what position you guys want the Vikings to draft. Now, the first meeting the Vikings have set up is with Florida quarterback Anthony Richardson. We've been talking about Anthony Richardson a lot on the channel. Kind of maybe him being the successor to Kirk Cousins and maybe being the franchise quarterback the Vikings need. And if you look at his stats this year at Florida, passing the ball, I mean, he's sitting under 55% completion percentage, just over 2,500 yards, 17 touchdowns, 9 picks. Not the most... Uh, complete passer of the football or the best passer of the football, but it's the dual threat ability that intrigues me about Anthony Richardson. His rushing stats, 103 carries, 654 yards, just over six yards per carry, and nine touchdowns while running the football this year. I'm all in on the Vikings drafting Anthony Richardson. Yes, it would be a risk. This is a guy where you're shoving all your chips to the middle of the poker table and you're saying, Anthony Richardson, you're our guy. Let's go figure this out. And I honestly think the Vikings have a pretty good arsenal of weapons and a good support system for a guy like Anthony Richardson. I think he's more of a developmental prospect. So if he could go into the Vikings organization, sit behind Kirk Cousins for a year, really develop with Kevin O'Connell and Kwesi Adolfa Mensa and get him where he needs to be to be the day one starter, maybe not this football season, but the next football season, I'm very intrigued by that. And also, Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson. If you're one young quarterback in the NFL and you're saying, I want to go play with two weapons, I, for me personally, it would be the young star receiver, Jefferson. You also have a young star tight end in TJ Hawkinson. Then you also have the young franchise left tackle in Christian Darisaw. I think Anthony Richardson, if he went to the Vikings, it would be a kind of a best of, or it would make both parties happy. I think Anthony Richardson would be excited, and I think the Vikes would would be excited as well. But go down, answer today's pin comment for me in the comment section. Do you want the Vikings to draft Anthony Richardson? If you do, give me a D for draft. And if you don't, give me a P for pass. This will be the pin comment on today's video. So if a YouTube ad break comes right now, just let it play, take advantage of it, and answer today's pinned comment. The next quarterback up on the list for the Vikings that they are meeting with is Will Levis. Will Levis, the Kentucky quarterback from this past season, and he intrigues me a ton. His stats from this past year, 65% completion percentage, just under 2,500 yards, and the 19 touchdowns to 10 interception. You know, he has a big arm, and for a guy like this, you're going to have to trade up for him, and honestly, you're going to probably have to go and trade up for a guy like Anthony Richardson as well. But I compare the situation that the Vikings are in this offseason heading into the draft to where the Chiefs were with Alex Smith. And do I think Will Levis or Anthony Richardson could become a guy like Patrick Mahomes? No, but I think the situation the Vikings are in where you have a good quarterback in Kirk Cousins that may not be able to take you over the top, you can go draft a guy like Anthony Richardson, Will Levis, have him develop for a year, and then really see what you have with a quarterback like those two who have that big arm, that big potential that they could be the next Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, which all these GMs are looking for. You're going to need to trade up for him, but Will Levis, Anthony Richardson definitely intrigue me. Now the third quarterback on this list, Dorian Thompson Robinson, the UCLA quarterback who is most likely going to be a day three pick in the upcoming draft. But again, he excites me a lot, especially since you're probably going to take him in the sixth or seventh round. A 70% completion percentage for this guy, just over 3,100 yards, and a fairly good touchdown to interception ratio at 27 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. I think this would be a fun late round pick for the Minnesota Vikings. This would be a pick where, you know, for the first Vikings preseason game, he would be the number one guy that I am looking forward to watch. I think if you're talking to maybe, since the Vikings only have four picks this year, you can make the argument that why would they consolidate all those assets, move up in the draft, and go get an Anthony Richardson, Will Levis? Well, this could be the other option. You know, he is the 
quarterback, I guess, in the later rounds that intrigues me the most just because of his dual threat ability. And honestly, I just like the way he looks. Whenever I'm watching his highlights, when I'm diving into a film, he intrigues me a lot. And he put up pretty good numbers under the UCLA offense as more of a pro-style offense that I do think that he could play well with the Vikings. You just got to let him develop. Now, if you want more draft coverage up until the NFL draft, we're going to have you covered here at Vikings Now by Chat Sports. Hit that subscribe button. It is completely free, and it helps us out a ton. Can we get 25 new subs on today's video? And if you are a new subscriber, just type me down below. Number four, Eli Ricks, the Bama corner met with the Minnesota Vikings, and I really want the Vikings to maybe take a chance on him in maybe the second round or maybe the third round in this year's draft. Eli Ricks, I think he would fit Brian Flores' system really well. He's a very versatile corner coming from Bama. He had 13 tackles in 2022 with four pass breakups. I think his versatility would intrigue a guy like Brian Flores a ton. And if you look at the Vikings' depth chart heading into next season, Patrick Peterson, Duke Shelley, your top two corners from this past year, are both free agents. I want the Vikings to bring back Duke Shelley. They're most likely going to let Patrick Peterson walk. But if you look at their depth chart right now, Cameron Dantzler, Andrew Booth, and Akela Bevins are really the only three corners that are set to be for sure on the roster next season. So the Vikings are going to either have to hit free agency or the draft because they need defensive back help. Whether it comes through taking a guy like Christian Gonzalez, Devin Witherspoon, maybe one of those top-end corners in the first round at 23 overall, you could go that route, or you could go a guy like Eli Ricks, who you may have to trade up to the second round, or you could sit there with your third round pick and take him. I like him. He's a versatile player. He plays physical. I think he would fit in really well with what Brian Flores and Kevin O'Connell are trying to do on the defensive side of the football. But do you guys think, corner. Is that the most important position the Vikings need to draft? Like, if you're looking at all the positions, I was either leaning corner, linebacker, if they do move off Eric Hendricks or Jordan Hicks, or maybe even a wide receiver too. But do you think corner is the position the Vikings need to draft the most? Give me a Y for yes or an N for no in the comments section. Today's show is sponsored by our sportsbook, BetUS. If you go to chatsports.com, slash bet and use promo code chat 125 they will get you a hundred and twenty five percent deposit bonus what does that mean you put in a hundred dollars in and they'll give you a hundred and twenty five dollars free the bet with and you can go bet on who you think is going to be the number one pick in this year's nfl draft right now it's sitting at bryce young at minus 160 cj stroud sitting there at plus 380 will levis at plus 650 anthony richardson at plus 750 and now here would be my bet Jalen Carter at plus 850. If the Bears decide to sit there at number one, I think it's going to be Jalen Carter. Obviously, there's been a ton of reports that the Bears are most likely going to trade that pick. But if they decide to sit there and stay at number one, Jalen Carter right there, incredible odds at plus 850. So go to BetUS or go to chatsports.com slash bet and use promo code chat125 and you will get your 125% deposit bonus. Go there, chatsports.com slash bet. Check it out. Isaiah Foskey is actually the last name on this list, the edge out of Notre Dame. And if, again, if you talk about Brian Flores types of players, this is him. He is fantastic. He had a great senior year at Notre Dame. He comes in weighing at six foot four, 223 pounds. And like I said, he could be an ideal fit for this Flores defense. Flores, when he was talking to his press conference for the Vikings, he was talking about guys that are versatile, can play multiple positions, and also play downhill and hit hard. That pretty much this guy describes Isaiah Foskey to the T. 45 tackles, 11 sacks, and one forced fumble for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish this past season. And I do think the Vikings are going to consider drafting an edge this year. The Vikings do cut Zedaria Smith, which they would save $14.5 million by doing so. Edge becomes a huge priority for the Minnesota Vikings in this upcoming year. I honestly think Isaiah Foskey, if you're talking about a guy the Vikings could draft maybe day two, Potentially day three, he could be the one. He had great production this past season, 11 sacks and a forced fumble. The Vikings, I think they're going to be more all-in on the cornerback position, but if they do move off Zadarius Smith, who knows, maybe even trade a guy like a Daniel Hunter, Edge becomes top of the priority list for the Minnesota Vikings because you do have guys like Patrick Jones, DJ Wanham, who have been okay production-wise the past couple years. We really don't have a star, and I think to win in the NFL, you have to have a star edge rusher. Look at the past Super Bowl champions, obviously the Kansas City Chiefs with Chris Jones and then Aaron Donald with the Rams. If you remember what the Buccaneers had with the Dabakin Sue, Jason Pierre-Paul, getting to the quarterback is honestly one of the toughest things to do in the NFL, but it's one of the most important things 
getting a guy like Isaiah Foskey could help that out a ton. I'll be talking about the NFL draft all up until the draft actually hits here in April. Follow me on Twitter, at Pat Seatman NFL. I'll be talking about it all off-season long. I'll be also posting a ton of cool clips and quotes from the NFL Combine. So give me a follow over there, at Pat Seatman NFL. And, it all, and as always, Skull Vikes.